This is an intro. Don't need to intro. I don't need intro. This is just a fake show. It's just a fake show. Fake show. Fake show. This is an intro. Don't need to intro. I don't need intro. This is just a fake show. It's just a fake show. Fake show. Fake show. YouTube, what is up? I'm your homeboy, own boy Josh, back at you with this new offering from Artery, the Suma. But before we get into this new offering from the people that brought you the nugget, I do want to take the time to remind you once again, we all need to do our part to fight for vaping and its future. That means if you're on social media, remember to paint the best possible image of the community that you can. If you're in a shop, remember to invite your customers to take part in the fight. We all need to do our part, and that means supporting all of Casas' calls to action, especially that to support HR 2058 and the call. Bishop Amendment. The Suma is an all-in-one device that encompasses both a tank and a mod, basically the entire vape in one device. It's an all-in-one. I remember being very impressed with the nugget for its packaging, and the Suma is no different. The Suma, the moment you open on up the packaging, you have a diagram and a layout of everything in here. Just on the inside of the box, there's this huge diagram of the device itself and every part and piece in there. It's like the ultimate quick start guide right there. And not only that quick start guide, but you also get a big old manual too. You get tons of extras. It's a great package that they put together for us. Everything is in its own little compartment here, in its own little plastic sheath. Artery has some of the most well put together packages that I've ever come across. Inside the box you'll find your mod ready to go with a coil already installed. You'll have an extra coil, you'll have an extra tank, charging cable, and a baggie of extras like o-rings and whatnot. The good stuff. The coil it comes with reads out at about 0.6 ohms, 0.58 is what it is. The coil is installed by taking the chimney and screwing the coil onto the chimney chimney rather than screwing the coil onto the bottom which kind of makes sense since it's such a long tank in here. And I usually vape it somewhere between 30 and 40 watts and it provides pretty decent vape that way. I'm not a big fan of the drip tip it comes with. I use my own drip tip with this one. This is a drip tip from uh, Just the Tip. I've got a bunch of drip tips from Just the Tip, but this is just the white one. White on white just seemed to work well with me. So I wasn't a huge fan of the drip tip it came with. Not really my thing being a metal drip tip, but it never got hot. Just a little bit too cold on the lips if you ask me. I didn't really use it for very long though. I actually really like the way that this tank performs. I've been using it for about two, three weeks now. Something like that. It's been a while. And I really enjoy it. There's something satisfying about the way that you take the battery out and it loads in from the bottom and then you screw it up with a penny. Don't ask me why. Something satisfying about it. I don't really use cash anymore and I definitely don't carry around coins with me anymore. I had to go find a penny, but a dime, a nickel will probably work just fine. Maybe even a quarter. Opening up the battery compartment is done in this fashion where you take a coin, open it up with the coin, drop the battery on in, and close it on up. Again, it's very easy. You just gotta have a coin handy. I also really like the way the airflow is up at the top like this, and it's marked with an O and a C. Very, very simple markings, very discreet markings. You really don't even notice it unless you're looking right at it. The airflow adjustment at the top of the device has a very short throw, and it goes from a wide open long hit all the way down to a mouth to long hit very, very easily. There's a little O and a little C on the top of it, and that's all you use to mark it off which way it's opening, which way it's closing. It's very comfortable in the hand, and there's something very aesthetically pleasing about that. Look at the box there. You know, it's a temperature control device, but I really don't use temperature control at all. I stick to wattage. Accessing this menu couldn't be easier. You hit the up button and the down button at the same time, and then you're in the menu. You've got options for work mode setting, which means you've got nickel, titanium, stainless steel, power mode being wattage, you've got voltage mode. You can choose your system of temperature being Fahrenheit or Celsius. You can set a wattage limit in temp mode. You can set it so you're lefty or righty. You can set it as to how long it'll take for it to power itself off. And just turn it off completely. It even has a software update option, and it shows you the software version. You can just exit. Very, very easy. The buttons are good and clicky. It's not a little bit plasticky. Very satisfying click that goes along with them. I don't like this fill line on the side here. You know, it's useful when you're first using the device that you know how far that you can you should fill it, but I kind of wish that there was some kind of a removable sticker that would come off over time because it's just like this little blotch right there that I'll never get rid of. I kind of wish that it wasn't there at all. It's a nitpicky thing, but really with this device, there aren't a whole lot of gripes. This thing at the top, 
this sort of, I kind of wish that that was, you know, like some kind of a fire mechanism. Something up here where if I touched it, it would do something, or if it was a screen or something like that. But it's just this, this hunk of black reflective surface, and I don't understand why that's there. Yeah, this thing at the top, I mean, what is this thing for? If you ask me, it looks like they were debating putting a screen at the top and then just decided against it at the last minute. Save a little money, cut corners, cut cost a little bit. I don't know. It looks like it shouldn't be there. And if it is there, it looks like it should serve a particular purpose, but it doesn't. It's just this shiny fingerprint magnet right at the top of the device. It's there for no reason from what I can tell. But aside from that and this little marking down here that acts as a fill line, I really don't have much to complain about. And I'm surprised by that because I hate the way the coil works in here. Or I should say, I would normally hate the way the coil works on here. A, it's very, very difficult to get off, get out. The way it screws off, it's, it's very, very hard to open, honestly. Straight up, taking out the coil sucks. It is the most annoying thing to take out because it is so tight at the top, which, I guess it's kind of a good thing. I mean, it's a leak-free kind of design. It doesn't open extremely easily. It's kind of difficult. You, you just need to push it and push it and push it, and it doesn't feel like it's opening, and then suddenly, there it goes. It's not my favorite mechanism on the device, trust me. Oh, finally. Damn, that thing is really hard to open. And when it comes down to time to change the coil, you're gonna have a big old mess here. But I mean, that's kind of the standard with coil heads. I mean, you can kind of expect the mess when, you, when it's time to change them. I've seen other tanks use this kind of system where the coil is attached to the chimney and when you open up the top of the tank, the chimney and coil come out one piece and all. I don't like those systems normally because usually that's also how you fill them. This one is actually filmed from the bottom and it works very, very, very well filling from the bottom. It's very, very roomy down there. Filling the device is very, very easy. There's this little screw off right next to the battery compartment. You open that up, flip it upside down and just drop the juice right on in there. It's pretty mess free, honestly. Very easy to open and there's no mess when you're going to fill it. It's so simple. And those openings at the bottom, they're plenty, plenty roomy. You can shove the top of the head of the dripper bottle right on into those little openings and fill it right up. Super, super simple. I've been rocking this thing for, like I said, two, three weeks. I haven't had to change the coil head once, not once. And for what it is, basically just a giant sub tank, it's got decent flavor, decent vapor production. Is it my cup of tea? Not necessarily, I like rebuildables. I kind of wish that it came with a rebuildable head. Yeah, Artery, you guys need to make a rebuildable head for this thing, that would be awesome. Decent rebuildable head, maybe a single coil kind of thing going on, maybe like a K-Fun style thing, I don't know. But it needs a rebuildable head if you ask me. I think that would be pretty sweet. That would be really nice, but a good rebuildable head, you know? I'd like that. For what it is, it's a very decent performer. If you're looking for something very pocketable, very easy to carry around, very comfortable in the hand, very easy to fill and maintain, and the coil heads last a good long while, I like it. If you guys wanna see products like this one remain on the market, remember to support HR 2058 and the Cole Bishop Amendment. We all have to do our part. Anyway, that's the Summa from Artery. Till next time, I'm your homeboy, homeboy Josh. Vape on vapors.